Okay, well here we go on level 4. And when I was young, this was my favorite Doom level by far. And I think instead of um, trying to speculate like I was doing with the previous maps about you know, how much was done by Tom Holland, how much was done by Sandy Peterson and all that. I I think I'm going to concentrate on just talking about what particularly stood out to this level, about this level to me. And I think at the beginning, right away, um, there's this dark music. You start off in a fairly, fairly dark room um, with this little secret on the side that's lit. Um, and then uh, it's pushing you towards this teleporter and this is a point of no return it's just like an introduction area but no other map that i can think of gives you a designated area at the beginning where there's a teleporter so it's like almost as if you know this area is not entirely real or it's a dream or something and here you're teleported into this big room um there isn't nearly in any of the previous maps there isn't nearly this much sp open space. I, I can't even think of another map that has this much open space, at least that you've seen yet. Um, and it's very tall also. Um, in front of you is an area that just goes up to a secret that looks like it's where it's leading you. But um, there's just a kind of a strange secret, um, which I don't know, m might have been a a Tom Hall thing or a Sandy Peterson thing because I never figured out how to do this um, but it's you have to just like <laughs> go up against that little sprite column which I never knew when I was younger when I played this but um, but yeah so that's all that's up here um, by the way this this level was by Tom Hall the first four levels in the episode are by Tom Holland were touched up by Sandy Peterson. Um, I don't obviously know the extent to which they were, but um, I think most of the things that were done were like retexturing and maybe the additions of some secrets and stuff. Um, so that, that area is just kind of a monster trap. But then you turn to the right and there's this very long hallway that and a, a little central area that's in the midst of a, t a pit of toxic waste and there um there hasn't like i said previously been this sort of layout that is so open and has this amount of space that there's something very foreboding about it especially you know with the introduction that i think hints back to um map one all the teleporters and stuff i said previously that i i didn't think that map one was maybe so indicative of the rest of the episode but maybe it is at this level um because there is a, some sort of similar mood there's also that weird texture with that witch thing which <laughs> uh just seems almost plastered on there and i i only remember it appearing in this level um so yeah, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, it, it has sort of a, a tech-based theme, but there's some textures that we haven't seen before. Um, th there's a lot of blue in that one area, which changes abruptly to red and then to green. Um, but yeah, I'll get to that later. Here I'm... Um, oh, this, this is another side area with a secret that you can see that right there you can't get to unless you shoot it. Um, but it's, it's just kind of a, a little trick that sucks you in and then you're, you're trapped down in this pit now. So this is another trap. Um, who knows if it was a Tom Hall or Sandy Peterson trap. And then there's, um, a crushing ceiling here, which is indicated pretty well by it, at least by those, um, all those corpses there. But yeah, you have to activate the switch to get back out, so it's just a little trap to suck you in. Um, and, you know, another just side area that's a room or two, um, but doesn't, you know, branch out much from there. So this is a pretty linear level, despite all the little side areas. Or at least the, like, the progression is, is linear. 
there's there's a bunch of areas that you're not required to go to and then there's the areas that you're required to go to and if you go in those that the path is linear but yeah there's that secret that's opened by shooting the wall um and here we're back here um this had um oh yeah and the, there's that blue area that's it's just just pure blue with these gray columns and whenever I felt whenever I reached this r room I sort of felt like something very strange and mysterious was going to happen and it sort of does um, obviously the effect is lost on <laughs> me as a you know person who is 26 years of age and played many doom levels but um, you know, as somebody who was just playing this game for the first time, I think this level had some kind of weird, profound effect that I don't necessarily think I can summarize. Maybe similar to um, some Wolfenstein maps that I've written about that are also by Tom Hall. Um, map, or episode 3, map 8, and episode 4, map 5, which, which have similar... Um, progressions that are kind of linear fairly linear but have lots of branching areas and then have tell this sort of weird story uh, have you know a sort of strange kind of epic progression to them um but yeah i don't know i think the reason i like this episode so much is there are these very distinct um areas and it, it seemed very um the game is called doom and it's you know it's about kind of exploring these spaces that are representations of hell and um i always felt like um as far as that the second episode achieved it best um because there is a really terrifying feeling to it um uh, feeling like that that uses both the the resources and the feel of the first episode to some extent and also the the hell the pure hell of the later um third episode but yeah here's another side secret area that i uh, that i didn't know about when i played this because i just didn't i don't know i always um i played this game uh when i was young as a sort of like tourism um for some I had really weird rituals, like, um, I'd almost never play episode one, or if I did, I wouldn't play past, like, level five, um, or I'd warp to the last level, because I liked that one, but I didn't like the later levels, but I'd always play, almost always, through this whole episode, except for level six, which I never liked, um, but we'll get to that at some point later. But yeah, this, this is str so strangely empty. There's no e enemies in that room. And that always really stuck out to me. And then it's very tall also. But once you enter over that, you're back into like a little bit of a tech baseland. But it abruptly changes. See, you just got a key in the previous room and now you're using it to open that door. Um, they could have put, the key could have been put in any previous like room um that would have made the progression more difficult but for whatever reason it wasn't so you're just kind of picking up the key and almost immediately opening the door and it's the same with this room this red room where you know everything abruptly changes to red <laughs> and um you're fighting another baron of hell and there's another crushing ceiling with this uh lovely blue and red texture that my friend JP says, like, you know, no one in their right mind would get away with making a texture like that because it's not representative of anything at all. It's just this weird abstract blob. But because of that, it's one of my favorite textures in the game, even though it doesn't get used very much. Other than, you know, it's used in hell settings and stuff, but yeah. Um, there's a weird bug in the engine that causes the, and I, I'm playing in Chocolate Doom, so this is, which is a source port that renders like essentially what the original game render would have rendered like, um, 
it tries to recreate it faithfully. So yeah, this is a bug that presumably is in the, was in the original game. But yeah, this room always felt like some kind of, um, like, I don't know, seance isn't the right word, some kind of like, um, <laughs> I'm just sitting here watching this ceiling. Um, very important room, like some kind of uh, worship room or, or something. I, I don't know how to explain it, but then it just suddenly goes darker here and you're in this like circular room. The rooms have been very square up until now, but the circular room is just like changing again, like changing the feel of the level and changing what it's about almost immediately. And there's that side room that you don't have to go to. There's this stupid secret, which I'm convinced if Tom Hall was upset about um, the secret in uh, map two that lets you um, open down one of the boxes to you know, bypass a part of the level. He must have hated this one because it warps you up to the top of an the next area, which, you know, requires a very particular progression to to get through. So I like, and you know, I always had a very particular ritual about going through this level in particular because I wanted to like, you know, feel the journey or whatever. So um, I just like no clipped right here because I didn't want to ruin that. And I didn't, I, I didn't know about the secret. I don't know why I missed that secret because it's not that hard to miss, but I had a very particular rituals about this level um, that couldn't be ruined. And I'd only sometimes, I'd sometimes go in that area on the side, but only sometimes. But yeah, you can see. And then this area is kind of a designated brown area. Once again, completely different theming. I guess we saw this texture in one earlier part, but yeah, and then there's all these doors. Um, I don't know if this was added or what. I can't speculate. Uh, I think I did too much of that um, previously. Um, but yeah, I, um, I don't know. I don't know if if these were all these areas were all meant to have like their own texture themes or not. But um, this, this like, you know, sort of abandoned, weird, hellish lab level gives way bec through, you know, the, the very d different feels of each of the areas. It's, it feels like uh, it's kind of giving way to hell and everything is just getting stranger and harder to predict and and more windy and um, I don't know it's um, it's a really interesting moment or at least it was for me um, and it doesn't really whatever it builds up to it kind of loses in momentum after this point I think the first four maps have a good momentum some people don't like map three but I think it it's consistent in feeling with especially map you know the maps preceding and before and after but um but once you get to map five and six which are done by sandy peterson um there's a much different feel um but yeah i, d I don't know uh, so here we're finally getting out of this part uh, this little trap actually reminds me of in map two, um, where and there's a side area where you opened all the switches, um, a bunch of switches to open areas with um, monsters, um, like three different doors, three different switches, and there was like a backpack in there. Um, that seems very similar to that to me. So that was probably a Tom Hall thing. Um, but yeah, here's where you go down. I remember this texture always looking really strange to me. But the, this is another circular area, and those guys are not supposed to be alerted yet. But um, in on the sides of the room, there are imps, and um, uh, in one Baron from Hell, because I'm playing on Ultra Violence, um, and they don't. You can't. You don't fight them until you activate that. Um, 
until you walk through that laser, which is where you, I was teleported into before, which is why I, you know, didn't like that. But I like that there's no real indication exactly that you have to walk through that. I mean, it's fairly obvious, but it looks like it could be incidental, like part of the environment. It doesn't make an obvious sound or anything. Um, but that is what opens up this other area with the teleporter. And, you know, the level starts and begins with the teleporter. Oh, I love that skin texture, by the way, too. It's the first time I think it's, you see this. And, the, and then the, the, the scrolling wall of faces. And that just, you know, when I was a kid, just totally freaked me out. Because it's like, you're in hell now, you know. It's, it, was the, it was the clear indicator that there was something very wrong. And then... Um, it doesn't, you know, waste any time and puts you to the exit with one last little trap, and I, which I, you know, sort of cheated to to get back onto the lift. I mean, it's not really cheating, but whatever. Um, but yeah, it doesn't. Um, so the level is, you know, bookended with these these areas that are um, they're not actually point of no returns because you can, you know, go back and forth through them. I'm looking. I don't know what I'm... Ch oh, I'm looking to see if I have all the secrets. Um, but this map doesn't waste any time. Like, um, each area has its own designated feel, and there isn't a lot of, like, rambling, you know, um, in, in them. It just goes from one thing to another, and, like, it doesn't have, like, a bunch of winding passageways after you enter in that... Uh, teleporter and see those faces it's just immediately puts you at the exit with one little trap it's just the perfect sort of size and feel for what it's trying to do and that's i don't know that's why i like this map so much As, um, aside from other reasons that i previously mentioned that map two and um, seven were also good at which is you know having a bunch of designated little areas with different feels and that's something that tom hall was really excellent at he was definitely biggest inspiration to me um as someone who played video games and really my favorite designer um and you know the john romero maps have a lot of beauty to them but i don't think john romero ha um, has the amount of uh, imagination as tom hall does really um he's good at um he's very smart and good at technical stuff and you know understands how games work and a lot of you know other very important things but tom hall just has the imagination of an artist um and that's why he's probably my favorite game designer at least he was when i was young because i played his games i played commander keen and wolfenstein and this and also anachronox um which was one of my favorite games but yeah, now we're in level 5, which was done by Sandy Peterson. And this is a very peculiar level. Um, one of the levels that I remember the least. It's kind of a, a hazy memory to me. I always remember this first area, um, and especially this outside area here. But there are all these side rooms, and they all just seem to connect up to each other. Um, in reality, um, there's only... Uh, there are only two paths forward and then they join so there's only really one path to the end um, unless you're counting the secret exit but I didn't know that when I was playing because there's so many small little areas that look like each other um, so unlike uh, the previous map this map does waste a lot of time and does have a lot of like small little rooms and side areas um, there's something very unsettling about this map to me because when I played it, because it was just confusing to me why this existed. Um, it, like the, the abrupt, almost violent shift in tone in the episode, not necessarily from the theming of the textures, but uh, yeah, this is my favorite area in this map by far. And Barons come down. Um, but not necessarily in the theming of textures at all, but the style of the map, it just, it's, it's like it closed up or something. Like there were these very evocative, distinctive areas 
um, that were kind of speaking to you as the player, and then all of a sudden it it just opens up into this kind of maze, and it doesn't have the same feel. And, you know, that was a really strange thing for me um, when I played it. And that's one of the things, you know, when you have two different designers um, and you have something that's, you know, been rushed to completion, really, um, been Frankenstein together that you're going to get. But at the time, I was just really confused by it. Um, and this is always, like, given this map a kind of a scary, mysterious, hazy quality to it. Whereas, you know, if it, if it were presented in some other context, it would probably be, you know, like, I don't know, this map feels like kind of an average map from like a, um, or above average map from like a PWOD, a, a player, you know, a user-made mod from, you know, I don't know, 1995 or 96 or something. Um, it just, there isn't a lot of distinctiveness to it and there is a lot of distinctiveness to Sandy Peterson's other maps um, even when they're not you know they don't work out exactly um, so it isn't a thing inherent to his design there's just something I never really got about this map here's this little windy side area I'm going to waste a lot of time on this map, and I don't really know what to say about it, to be honest. Here's where the secret um, is. Um, and yeah, it's... Um, I don't know, this map is kind of this maze. Actually, I was just watching an episode of um, the Ghost Adventures, which is a show that I like to watch. Um, uh, you know, they, they go through all these abandoned haunted buildings and currently the episode that I'm watching they're in like a, this old it's like a military base um, and there's also a prison in Arkansas and it's like connected to these really intricate it's just miles of these really intricate above ground tunnels and he says um, walking through it was like you know walking through um, playing Doom in real life and um, <laughs> I, th I think he must have been referring to this map or the next map because uh, this map does give me that feeling. Um, but yeah, here, here I'm at the secret exit, which I'm going to go to eventually. I don't really know why I felt the need to go to the secret map because I skipped the secret map in episode one. But this warps you back at the beginning, which I find so fucking annoying um, because this map is like confusing and it's not like you know Dunlocks it's sometimes like when it'll warp you back to the beginning when you know a map warps you back to the beginning and it, it's unlocked something that lets you get closer to where you were but this map doesn't do that so that that's one thing that really pisses me off but that's definitely a Sandy Peterson thing to do that um but yeah so I'm just finishing up these lost souls and, um, yeah, uh, oh, and those weird, that's, that hurts you. The ceiling is blood, and it hurts you. It's like that area is, um, a couple areas on map one that hurt you, but, like, the ceiling is blood. It's just such a really weird, unconventional choice. Um, oh, and I didn't actually go through that, um, corridor, um, go all the way through that. But on the other side of that is a secret that I keep trying to get in this playthrough. Um, and I'm going to take forever to get. I don't remember even how to get the... It's, it's It involves getting a plasma rifle. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I actually... I, d I maybe just liked the secret map um, of this episode. Uh, when I was young, even though it's like literally just two rooms, and one room has a baron, and one has one has cacodemons, um, I like to. I think because of the name, it's called Fortress of Mystery, and that 
name just really summed up how this episode felt to me. Um, it felt like these these castle and these like tech areas that just felt so mysterious. Um, and the first episode, you know, it does feel mysterious, but they're structures that they do exist in a video game and they don't exist like functionally, but you can still like sort of make, you know, you can understand them. They make sense to you at some level. Whereas this is, is not, is not that. And I think, honestly, I think that's like why a lot of people like the first episode, but that's why it like, that's like, um, I think sometimes it shows a, like a, a weakness or a lack of imagination or a lack of a ability to embrace, you know, the fact that you were playing a video game and that you're not just, you know, because it's not something that you can easily like fetishize and experience, experience, um, when it's something that is so kind of strange and broken up and inelegant, um, because, you know, there's, when something is so elegant and s seems to fit together so well in this, like, spatial way, I think there's something like, you know, it's like a, it's like a performance or something that's so, you know, well, um, you know, just what, something that's so well performed in the way that you, we would think about it as being, you know, skillfully performed and it's very elegant and, you know, this idea of perfection whereas like something that's very kind of br brash and emotive and, and weird and crazy but might be might have like something deeper embedded in it um and i think i've always you know responded more to those those second things Here's a secret, which is kind of an interesting secret, if only f for the really long passageways that you have to run to, to get to them. I, looking at the map, I was just totally confused by this secret, but it makes more sense to me in here. It's just that this area, you know, in previous um, levels when you looked at the map, um, all the areas are kind of tightly fitting together. So if there's like long secrets, they're winding around other things. But here, this long secret just kind of is off on another part of the map, I think. Um, so it just looks really strange to me. It looks like this <laughs> total mystery side area. But then when I'm playing it, I realized I had seen this, um, seen this area before. When I was actually, I was walking through this episode with my friend JP a while back, and He's saying that this texture is um, known as AA shitty <laughs> on the um, uh, on the the Doom texture list is the very first thing that's listed and like almost never used in the game. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's and you know it's probably not used for a reason because it looks pretty shitty. There. Are there's maybe one or two other textures that I would consider shittier, but, <laughs> you know. And then that warp also warps you back to the beginning, which is so irritating. You can at least come up through here, and it's not that far away, but, um, I don't know. I'm really, really irritated by the, the warps that send you back to the beginning. There's no rhyme or reason for them, to be honest. Um, I did like that room, that branching path. Um, there's something very like foreboding and mysterious about that so uh, sandy peterson's maps when they're at their best can be really evocative and interesting um and you know like suitably gothic or hell feeling um and the, i'd say this in doom 2 as well there are some maps with really interesting feels um but, you know, at worst, they often feel like hodgepodge, um, like just that they don't come together or that they're just kind of boring. Um, and episode three, which I will hopefully go through, I'd say most of those maps fit in the former category, but there are a couple, like map four is pretty boring. 
Um, and map one isn't terribly interesting, but it's short. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, but the other ones, um, the other ones at least have you know themes and, and stuff that that hold together well. And you know, in Doom Two, it's a lot more rambly. And um, God, I hate that that goes back to the beginning. I kind of I do like this initial area, um, but this map just doesn't seem to do anything with it. It kind of just seems to ramble, um, and and maybe that rambling is is feeling like you're you're working into like the inner you know guts of this beast that's just breaking apart into a, a lot of pieces. Like there there's something that's not as easy to explain or understand about you know whatever you're experiencing this hell world um but i don't know that might be giving it too much credit um, i do like this room this has the the texture that's not in doom 2 it's called skin tech there are some good textures um that are in doom 1 that i guess were taken out of doom 2 because um they just didn't um have the space for them especially some of the hell textures that they're, they're really you know complicated detailed techy ones are the are the really the best ones and um, it's a shame that they didn't get used i died here because i'm an idiot <laughs> yeah and then you go to this boring red brick texture that's used all the time i always found it weird how um uh, some of the, the more detailed textures, how a lot of them are just a lot more interesting to me than um, than the ones that are not detailed, but the ones that are not detailed get used all the time in mods and everything, because they're more all-purpose, I guess. But, um, but it makes, like, a really weird, unbalanced feeling. I will say that I mean, the reason, one of the reasons why I responded more to Doom uh, versus Quake when I, you know, when I started playing it is because, um, as, like, my friend Anna Anthropy says, Doom actually has colors in it. Um, and that's why I liked, you know, like, levels 1 through 4, 2 through 4, especially in level 7 of episode 2, because it, it changes color all the time. There are all these different moods. Um, and sometimes it's dark and sometimes it's bright and you have bright lights and stuff and it's, it's very um, evocative whereas Quake, I mean, has a, a, a very interesting style um, and it, it isn't as hodgepodge as Doom but I just never responded as much to it and I know there are some people who really like it but yeah, I like this exit area kind of it, you know winds around and there's the central area with all these um, the demons that come out if you pick up that armor so that that area is pretty cool but yeah I'm gonna go back and um, get that last secret and then exit to the secret level which I don't know um, I found looking in um, on the, the Doom forums for people's, you know, favorite and least favorite levels, that that secret level is um, pretty much one of the only levels that I can say is universally, like, no one's favorite and many people's least favorite because there isn't much going on. But I'd say it's about as equally as interesting to me as uh, Map 9. It's just that Map 9 has a little... or Map 9 of Episode 1. It's just that Map 9 of Episode 1 has, like... A little bit more going on to it um yeah i don't know this open area um it makes me think of there's some open areas in um, early on in do one that that er i always confused with that area i don't know if you've ever had like these weird like not necessarily fever dreams but where you you kind of like you played so much of one game that the areas start to blend together and they'll start to have this weird, eerie, familiar quality to them. 
um, as if there are places that you've walked in before. But by the way, on the on the map, you can see that there's like debris. Um, there's debris on the map that gets built up and built up, and by the time you get to the end of the episode, it's a, it's a full tower. Um, and also this fortress of mystery tower, which is only two rooms. Um, uh, only um, appears when you when you go here on the secret area. So yeah, but this is just two rooms. I kind of like the look of this room. I'm trying to get the two guys to fight each other and I'm just trying to pick up all the items even though I don't need them. I do like how you begin... Um, I mean, I, I, I like the setup that there are all these barons coming at you right from the beginning and you have to run out of the way and pick up that stuff. And, like, there are dead cacodemons in the first room. In, in the second room, there are live cacodemons, so it's like they had some sort of fight or something that hasn't been completed yet. So I'm trying to get them to fight each other, and I play this very badly, but I have enough, like, health and armor to where I can get through this. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. So at least this one has a concept, um, and I can't say the same for episode 1, map 9. Uh, yeah, I just barely get out of here alive. But yeah, the, the, there's an eerie quality to these things when you um, you played so much of these games. It, it, it does feel like you've been here before, and the end of this map always reminded me of an area that's at the in episode four, map one, um, that is kind of similar, and I just always get them confused. And I don't know, there's something um, very. It's, it, I guess it's something that only like people who played a lot of video games would understand. That like mixing up these spaces and then being such carrying such like metaphysical, <laughs> metaphorical, whatever you want to call it, weight in your head to where that they like keep occupying the space over and over again, and they become associated with your own like memories and stuff, and. Um, they become parts of you, really, and that's something that this episode always did to me, and Doom Maps did. Um, like it was, it was almost as if you're exploring parts of your unconscious or something, and this this episode always felt like that, and and that's why I think Doom keeps bringing me back, and like mods like Alt kind of speak to that um, when a lot of stuff really doesn't. So. Anyway, we're going to look at maps 6 through 8 um, at some point, but um, anyway, I will see you guys later.